was a nice little bit of nostalgia. Nostalgia? The Flames getting into a fight with their former captain who's now on the Leafs? No, not that. And what? Nazem Kadri getting completely screwed by the refs. Completely screwed? And now he's not even a Leaf anymore. Not even a Leaf anymore. Maybe people will actually believe us now. <laughs> oh, no, I know. Let's go! Good. We all feel Stop! good. Stop! Never gets rusty! What am I doing? Into my kitchen! Producer Drew, can you fix all this? <laughs> and when it comes to the Toronto Maple Leafs, you can crumple, crumple, yeet! Saw that going differently. With you, wherever you are, welcome to LFR. Victory puppies, Iggy! Oh, uh, Iggy's not here, so, um... Charlie, victory puppies! Hey, isn't this cute? Yeah, someone got this uh, for us, like, very shortly after Charlie died. And I like it now, but I really didn't like it when we got it. But, like, now I'm like, like, look at that dumb face. Look at it. Uh, that guy was the happiest guy! Are we all sad now? We're all sad. Screw it! Blow a 4-1 lead and then win the game anyway! It's not the nicest meal, but it'll fill you up! Boy dinner! Leafs win! 5-4 in the shootout! Sure! Over the Calgary Flames! Hey, listen, listen! What did I say heading into these four games? Calgary, Vancouver back to back, and then the two games in Sweden. It'd be nice to come out of that 2 1 and 1, you know? Five points in eight games, at least. Hey, there's two! And part of the equation was you needed these two. You're allowed to go out and get two in the next three games, but you really needed this one. So screw it! They got the two points, and I'm gonna be honest. I don't even really care that they blew the 4-1 lead, and I'll explain why. And I will do it quickly because it sounds like news might happen fast and furious here. Potentially while I'm shooting this video, or maybe it'll be out of date, I don't know. There's at least one particular hockey agent who is a busy bee with their thumbs this evening. But allow me one more time to talk to you about Easter Seals. I'm not gonna ask you for money, you already gave it. I don't have the final number in front of me, but it's somewhere in the neighborhood. It's definitely over 900. It's likely a thousand different donors donated to Rachel's Raiders alone. $75,000. Closer to 76 by the end of today, actually. Thousand dollars raised for Easter Seals Ontario, a charity that helps out kids with physical disabilities. Rachel's Raiders win their fourth fundraising title as the top fundraising team and their third straight let's go we had a great time today i was terrible team was pretty good we won both our games that's that's good our all-star was john leclerc and he was fantastic he tried to get me a goal all day didn't work. Actually, until the very end, my buddy Jeremy got me the puck and he fed me for a goal on an empty net, you know? But it's fine. You know what? That's a leader. That's a leader. Allow me to be sentimental for just a minute because I want to have a silly, goofy video, but, like, listen, growing up, we went to those Easter Seals camps, my mom, my dad, myself, and my sister. My sister has cerebral palsy. And they were incredible camps. They were great experiences. We got to have fun as a family, which was really difficult to do outside of like the McDonald's play place basically as a kid. And my parents were on the phone very often when I was a kid. My mom especially was on the phone very often, always trying to get help, trying to find different resources for my sister. And I think a lot of those days our family desperately wanted people like you. So if you donated, even if you just lent us your moral support, Thank you, seriously. Like I said, this year Rachel's Raiders raised about $76,000 and over the entire time that I've played at this tournament that I got introduced to thanks to Kenny Reed, we've raised, Rachel's Raiders has raised $450,000. The entire Eric Lindros Celebrity Hockey Classic tournament this year alone raised over $550,000. Eric Lindros had a great line today when he was up on stage, and I'm paraphrasing here. He said there's a lot of work to be done, but this is winning. This is what winning looks like. We all felt like winners today! So, let's talk about this game. We don't have to break it down goal by goal. Somewhere producer Drew just sigh of relief. I heard that from Brampton. Because I did actually think it was kind of simple. The reason blowing the 4-1 lead doesn't bother me as much as it should, besides the fact that the Leafs got the two points, they were kind of clearly the better team almost the whole time. Nylander was stupid all game long. Unbelievable. Just wrecking shot past Vladar. Tucks it. Zeri gets a goal. He's been amazing for the Flames. I really hated that rebound from Wall. That wasn't great. More on him. But then Yarncroak puts the Leafs back up 2-1. Assist from Domi and Robertson. Why wasn't this a line the 
the whole time! Robertson needed time in the AHL. Okay, fine, why wasn't this aligned more recently? Why couldn't anyone other than Camp have been a placeholder? Anyway, and, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, um, I thought it should have been 3-2 after the period. Number one, Morgan Riley scores. Like on the broadcast, it said he scored. I've watched it back. I saw the net move. Riley celebrated. Everyone else celebrated. We all thought it was in. And they never showed the replay. If they did, I didn't see it. <laughs> that, I trust that it didn't go in because like the NHL is like, they're bad at a lot of stuff, but like, they, Surely they would have got that. But the other one, man, Nazem Kadri got screwed. Battle in front, puck is loose, ref doesn't see it's loose, blows the play dead, Kadri tips it in like a millisecond later. Then William Lagason absolutely mauls Kadri as a lead fan. Hey, great, great, great that he did that. Protect your goalie, uh, investment in the rest of the season. But also, um, <laughs> like, what did Kadri get a penalty for? Kadri should have come out of that play with a goal and he left with a two minute minor for getting mauled, which, um, hey, you know, some traditions don't change. But he's not a Leaf anymore, so maybe it like matters now? I don't, mm? Second period early on, William Nylander killing a penalty because the refs just sort of went, yeah, sure, here. They abandoned the game, eh? They screwed up that call. I think they might have known they screwed up that call. They give the Leafs to, like just a, here, here, like here's a power play for you, Calgary. But then, a shorthanded goal? And it's from Nylander? Yeah, definitely, absolutely. Play him, play the wheels off him. 3-1. And then Willie's connection with Tavar. It's so stupid. It's so stupid. It's really funny they gave Riley the secondary assist. So the Leafs are up 4-1. They're dominating the Flames. It reads like it on the charts. It looks like it to the eyes. The Leafs have the better players going. Vladar does not look all that helpful in that for the Flames. Noah Hannafin is having a terrible game. But less than a minute after the Leafs make it 4-1, Nikita Zadorov with his first of the season <laughs> with an audition for his new team. Now, here's why I say that, and this is T. This is even better than the game. Because later in the game, Zadorov flattens Tyler Bertuzzi coming across his zone. It, it was a great hit. It's a great hit. It's a clean hit. It's a great hit. But Dan Milstein, the agent for Nikita Zadorov, tweets, Here comes Zadorov train, dot, dot, dot. Get your Leafs, hashtag Leafs forever tickets today. Hashtag we are gold star, which he ends every tweet with. Sorry, here comes the Zadorov train. Get your Leafs tickets today. He's on the flames. Are you talking about like get a ticket from like a sketchy dude outside so you can watch the third period? Like what what do you which this is the only game Calgary has in Toronto this season. You know that, right? And then there was a follow-up. Someone tweeted, Dan, can we keep him? And he responded, I don't think so. Not when the best D barely gets the ice time. That is a spicy meatball. I'm going to go out on a limb. I don't think Zadorov is going to be a flame much longer. He's been in rumors for weeks now, 32 thoughts. I think CJ has brought him up as well, that he's going to get moved. And it sounds like... To the Leafs, there might be other parts involved, potentially Tanev, something like that. But of all the guys most likely to join Brad Treliving in his departure from Calgary, it, it sounds like Zadorov is the most likely guy. And this is basically his agent going, oh, let's get this process over with. I honestly wouldn't be surprised to hear of a trade like by the end of this video, I'm serious. And ooh, look what just came down. From reporter Chris, Chris Johnston, CJ. He said, with Nikita Zadorov looking to be traded out of Calgary, word is the pending UFA defenseman would welcome a move to Toronto. Oh, 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 like I said, picante. We're not done there. A few minutes later, it's a tip in from AJ Greer. Again, weak in front, they're within one. Leafs at very least hold the fort in intermission, but third period, Martin Pospisil, ties the thing. Here's the most frustrating part about that, the fact that this game even made it to overtime. You know what the shots were in the third period? They were 11 to three. 11 to three, 
for the Leafs! So like, yeah, the Flames mounted a comeback, but instead of riding the momentum, they just slammed on the e-brake. Part of the reason I'm not that mad about the Leafs blowing that lead, I mean, there's definitely some things that they need to fix up. We'll talk about that in terms of roster construction. We'll talk about it. But the Leafs outshot the Flames 33 to 22 before overtime hit. In overtime, Calgary, you know, outshot the Leafs 6-3. I didn't think the Leafs were that outmatched, but they still look pretty clueless at times in three on three. Like the best players in the world, it's so weird. But like the numbers suggest that the Leafs were much better than the Flames and they were. They had looked like it. Gotta keep the puck out of your net. And while I didn't love Wool's first goal allowed, like that was a great like redemption arc through the course of the game. Like he stopped a couple breakaways, like a couple really good opportunities for the Flames to like tie it up or take a lead. And then in overtime makes a bunch of great saves to keep the team in the game. And then he stops five of six, I think it was, in the shootout? This is what good goalies do. This is what successful starting goaltenders do in the National Hockey League. Because they're not gonna make 70 saves on 71 shots every night. The best goalies in the NHL have bad periods, but they know how to stop a bad period from being a bad game. Like, I don't know what the expected goals for and against were for this game, but like, in terms of save percentage, like, this isn't gonna shine brightly on Wool. But he had a bad period and he turned it into a good game. A game where he gave his team a chance to win. That's all you can ask for. Sharon Govich scores in the shootout. I think it's over. Marner bobbles the puck. I really think it's over. Then he gets it back like five more times. Deeks it backhand on Vladar! And he goes like this, and I don't know why he went like this. Like, no, no, no. Like, I, I didn't lose it. Yes, you did. What? You found it. And then who ends it? Who other? Then Max Domi, who has no goals this season, and you watch that shootout goal and you go, how? Like, dude, that was nasty. He's a totally... That guy's swagger and everything is completely different since being on a line with Yarncroke and Robertson. So let's talk about it. To emphasize my point with the third line, shots were 10 nothing for the Leafs when Max Domi was on the ice at 5 on 5 tonight. I know Domi is not supposed to be the best defensive player on this team, but is allowing zero shots against good and out shooting the other team by 10? Like if you consider 3 on 3 nonsense, the Leafs through the first three periods Outshot the Flames by 11. Domi outshot them by 10. And I had an epiphany tonight. I, I did, I really did. Because Matthews, Marner, Nyes, eh, they were fine. They'll, they've had better games. They will have better games. Nylander, uh, Tavares connection was ridiculous. And Tyler Bertuzzi, despite getting crushed, and I don't know if he got a point in this one, He's put together, I'd say that's three straight really good, really competitive games. Like Jake McKay back in the lineup too. Like there was definitely an increase in the give a crap meter tonight. But there was an obvious flaw in the third line and they fixed it. You can't have David Camp as your third line center. You can't. If you want him to be in a shutdown role, that's great. That's fine. Put him in a position to succeed in that shutdown role. And that is not with Max Domi on the wing and... Whoever else they- it was nice! You're wasting all three players involved! So the Leafs said, okay, we'll stop doing that. And weirdly, they started scoring a lot more goals. Problem is, they kept allowing a lot. Well, who kept allowing a lot? Dude, the fourth line is unplayable. But, then you double shift some guys and you move some parts around and you discover, well, it's not necessarily the fourth line is unplayable. Dude, Ryan Reeves is unplayable right now. Uh, listen, hand up. I thought the experiment would be fun and it would be great. The Ryan Reeves we're seeing now is not the Ryan Reeves we saw in the first two games, who was running everybody over and when they had something to say about it, he fought them. I don't know if he's hurt, but he's not fighting. He's not hitting. He looks depressed. Like all that, like, yeah, I'm gonna control the music. I'm gonna be this team's cheerleader. He looks so bummed at all times. You know why? Because his line is fishing the puck out of the back of the net like every second or third shift. And there might be a solution on the horizon. The Toronto Marlies tweeted this out before the game and I, I thought it was interesting. You know, normal. Friday night, Lions, Max Ellis, illness, day to day. Forward Bobby McMahon is not in the lineup for precautionary reasons and he will not dress for tonight. Whoa, whoa, wait, huh? What? For Precautionary for what? What's there to be precautionary about? If he's injured, say he's injured. But the, is he, is his precautionary hurt? What's why we're using that word? That's a big word. So what I'm pretty sure this means is Bobby McMahon is about to get called up 
there's a really good chance he could be put on the fourth line, right wing, so you would have Gregor Kampf McCann. McCann, <laughs> I don't know how to say this without being a jerk, but like he's huge and can move the body around and also like play hockey, man. Like, so my thinking is Bobby McMahon is going to go with this team to Sweden unless he just plays the second half of a back-to-back -back and gets sent back down. It's all possible. I don't know what they're doing, but like, you know, you're, you're feeling the shakes getting a little stronger, eh? I just feel like the trade volcano is about to blow. But look, the Leafs have allowed at least four goals in every home game. That's wild. They're constantly in a position where they have to outscore their problems, which is a step backward. But what if you fixed the line that you, you haven't changed at all? I, I'm pretty sure it's been Gregor, like, either Holmberg or Camp Reeves. The entire time. You haven't changed the winger. What if we took the thing that was zero goals for and 11 against and just stop doing it? What if we just stop doing that? Do you think if we just stop doing that? Like, what's the league's goal differential right now this year? Like, probably, like, close to even? Maybe a plus two? Imagine you could just add 11 to that <laughs> with, a, with a fourth line that breaks even, man. We don't even need a great fourth line. Break even. And tell you what, how about, what if you're, like, minus five? That would be like a better than 50% improvement. So, Bobby McMahon is getting called up. I think he's going to get in the lineup, but there's some more Marley's business to talk about. We're about to head into Marley Minute with Nick Barden, credentialed reporter, also works with the Hockey News, goes to every Marley's home game. The Marley's have some goalies. The Leafs have some goalies. One of them's doing really poorly. And people are starting to ask questions about like Martin Jones. Will Martin Jones get an opportunity, but he's not the only goalie the Marlies have. There's Keith Petrozelli, who got a brief call up last year, but there's also someone new to North America, a draft pick from a few years ago, Dennis Hildeby, the Hilde Beast. Nick Barden has a little bit more on him. Here he is. While there are a few topics I could discuss today, I want to talk about goaltending and specifically Dennis Hildeby. Now, if you remember, Hildeby was drafted in the fourth round of the 2022 NHL draft, and this is his first full season in North America. And currently he has one win, one loss, and one shootout loss. The one thing that is catching my eye early aside from his play is his 935 save percentage across those three games he's played this season. Now, while it is a small sample size, Hildeby played two games last season after coming from Sweden to join the Marlies and in those two games he allowed eight goals and had an 849 save percentage so when you compare that to this year there's a lot of good things going there standing at six foot seven Hildeby covers most of the net and he's very good positionally as well meaning he won't have to move back and forth with such a big frame but when he is needed to move back and forth he can and he's also able to extend his body out to make some big saves when the Marlies need it most the biggest thing about a goaltending prospect especially one coming from Europe is coming to North America and finding his confidence and getting in a groove. And although there are three goaltenders with the Marlies right now, including Hildeby, Petrozelli, and Martin Jones, Hildeby seems to be finding his confidence and finding his game early on, which should translate to better and better performances in the future. Hildebeest, baby, he's huge. He looks larger than life. And it's only been a handful of games. Looks pretty good. Questions. Has Willie priced himself out of re-signing? No. He hasn't, and I'll tell you why. Because that is not the way I choose to live my life. No. Mm -mm. I've already lived through one agonizing will he or won't he Willie uh, uh, contract talk. I've already, I've, I've survived that. I'm done it. I'm past it. The Marner apocalypse of a few years ago. We're done. That's over with. That's who I used to be. That is an ugly part of my past that I prefer we could just leave in the past. That is an ugly part of all our past. How many hours is, oh, just doom scrolling? How many, like, thinking about, like, oh, are the Leafs gonna have to make a trade? Who could they get? Is it gonna be Hannafin? No. No. Like, so has Neeland, I, 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 I'm sorry, hmm? I didn't understand your question. I'm not, it's not how I'm living my life. I'm gonna, instead of thinking about cap hits and all that, I'm gonna watch William Nylander play hockey and go, Wee! That's the life I'm trying to live. In honor of the game being on TSN, I present you the Dangle Quiz. What do you take from tonight? A, they can't defend. B, it wasn't pretty, but they got it done. C, Leafs didn't let goals get to him, especially after Calgary tied it. I think you meant get to them, that's fine. 
D, I hate John Klingberg. But I, I think D's just mean, I don't think we need to do that. Uh, we're not going to go with C. Uh, and I don't like A either. So I'm going to say B. Ah, screw it. Screw it. They won. They won. You know how sometimes you're like, Steve, chill. It's game 14. I'm going to tell you, you know what? Chill. It's game 14. It's game 14. Eh. Like the Leafs overcome a 4-1 deficit against Tampa and you're like, oh, you know, they shouldn't have been down 4-1 though. And the Leafs win a game where they blew a 4-1 lead and it's like, oh, you should have never blown it. You know what? You can look at it that way, that glass half empty way. I look at it as four points. Wee! I don't need them to be cup contenders now. I need them to be in a playoff position and get better every day. How's that? So, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you liked this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. And click subscribe on the STPN channel. We're at just about 95,000 subscribers. We're so, so close to 100. Please get us there. Um, tell all your friends. Like, I, I don't... I do this intro a lot and it's... I always forget it. I'm not a smart guy.